Welcome to Taking Stock. I'm Amanda Lang. Coming up in the show, inflation continues to bite hard at the basic costs of living. And is a ban on single plastic use the best way to tackle an obvious problem? Plus, healthcare professionals are under strain, and the whole system is showing cracks. That is all ahead. First, though, for the week that was in business, it's time for the briefs. High gas prices helped keep inflation at a record level in May. The 7.7% rate of inflation is the fastest since 1983. Gas is now 48% more expensive than a year ago. And food prices are also continuing to soar, once again up just shy of 10%. Most categories continued to see pressure as shipping costs soar and commodity prices remain elevated. Atlantic Canada is seeing the worst inflation in the country, with Saskatchewan the lowest at 7%. The Bank of Canada continues to warn it will raise rates to rein in inflation. Getting consumers to believe that inflation will be contained is important. We know inflation is keeping Canadians up at night. It's keeping us up at night. Um, and and we, will not, uh, we will not rest easy until we get it back down to target. Job vacancies remain at record levels in Canada. StatsCan reports just over a million vacant jobs in April, up 44% from the year before. Economists say the gap between jobs and workers may only be filled if wages rise or other working conditions change. So far, wages have not kept pace with inflation. And in fact, in April rose just 4%, a slight decline from the month before. Sectors with the biggest vacancy rates include healthcare, construction, and retail. Meanwhile, the tight labor market is showing up in more job actions as workers flex their power while they have it. Signal and communications workers at CN are on strike, demanding higher pay and benefits. Airport screening officers came to work in casual clothes on Monday in protest of being overworked and underpaid. And 330 workers in the Bay's e-commerce division are on strike, protesting wages they say have not kept pace with inflation. Making homes more affordable is a supply issue, we're told. And now the country's housing market monitor has a new number for us. 5.8 million new homes are needed in the next eight years to bring prices back to affordable levels. Trouble is, only 2.3 million are expected to be built. The biggest gaps in supply are in Ontario and British Columbia. CMHC noted that in 2003, the average household had to spend 40% of their income on housing. By 2021, that number had grown to 60%. The federal government is banning single-use plastic in Canada. By the end of this year, it will be illegal to make or import the products, and by the end of 2025, illegal to export them. It affects everything from plastic straws to cutlery and shrink wrap. The Fed said that the goal is to stop plastic from making its way into landfills and the world's oceans. Critics say it doesn't go far enough, and they'd like all plastic production banned. Giant food company Kellogg says it will split itself into three parts. Its dominant snack business, which is 80% of its sales, and two others focused on its classic cereal brands and its new plant-based products. Each of the businesses will be an independent public company, very likely with very different futures. The fast-growing snack business could buy other strong brands, while the stagnant cereal business would focus more likely on cost-cutting. Meanwhile, the plant-based food company, Morningstar Farms, is ripe for a sale, according to analysts. Recent market volatility in cryptocurrencies, like Bitcoin, have many wondering about the future for it and other cryptos. Now, a major player in global banking says the future is more likely to see digital currencies in use that are backed by central banks. The Swiss-based Bank for International Settlements, which is owned by the world's central banks, said in its annual report that cooperation among countries will be key to making a global system work, but that it is the most likely outcome for digital currencies seeing widespread adoption. And those are your business briefs. Businesses that are also trying to cope with high prices are not getting much relief, and those that also rely on service employees are being squeezed from both sides. Will price hikes follow, confirming fears of an inflationary spiral? Olivier Bourbeau is Vice President, Quebec and Federal Affairs at Restaurants Canada. Olivier, great to have you with us. Thank you. So restaurants actually seem like the perfect place to uh, take a close look because it's a bit of a, a microcosm of what's happening everywhere, which is businesses don't want to pass on higher costs, and yet their own costs really are, are remaining more, higher than people expected. What are you hearing from the restaurant businesses out there, big and small, about what they think they need to do in these months ahead, which are pretty important months for them? Well, it, it's extremely difficult these days. Actually, uh, since, since the beginning of COVID, 13,000 restaurants have closed permanently in Canada, 13,000. 
Uh, moreover, uh, half of the restaurants are still at risk of closing. In addition to that, you have the inflation crisis. And in addition to that, you also have the labor shortages. So te terrible times. That being said, summer is coming. Fingers crossed that we will have a, a good summer. But uh, it's as difficult for the, the big chains as for the franchisees as with the independent owners. And of course, that labor shortage is not an easy fix. We have heard some economists saying high wages fix it. Uh, it's not, it hasn't always been true uh, in every sector. What do you think does need to happen to draw people back into this, this sector? Because there's a very specific type of worker and they seem to have disappeared. Again, big challenge. Challenge number one in the food service industry. Pre-COVID, we were already looking for 60,000 workers. Right now, Entering summer, we are looking for uh, to uh, 210,000 vacancies on 1.2 million workers. So that's a lot. Uh, thing is that during COVID, we lost a lot of workers uh, trying to find more stable jobs, obviously. Uh, so we need to uh, bring them back. Uh, and, and wages is not is not uh, a, a, a an easy solution for us because with a an average margin of two to three percent pre-tax profit for an average restaurant, it's extremely difficult for us to pay even more than what we already do. One of the things that seemed to happen, Olivier, is that people rethought how they wanted to live, what they were willing to do, and at what price, uh, that kind of the whole frontline worker. Uh, are higher wages coming our way? And I guess by definition, will we, will we pay more to eat out in future? Is that your expectation? We well, you, you said it earlier. It's difficult to transfer uh, any any price increase to the to the customer because there's there's always a limit to to what a customer can is ready to play for a plate uh, to pay for a plate, uh, obviously. And and we are between we are placed between a rock and a hard place because we would like to pay better wages. We try we tend to do it, especially in the kitchen. But may, maybe people don't not realize. But if you take a look at Toronto or Montreal, a dishwasher can make up to twenty twenty one dollars and. An hour so we, we, we are extremely limited we pay the much maximum that we can mm -hmm. and of course we, we need to we try to absorb every price increase that we can not to transfer it to the customer so good to have you Olivier I appreciate your time thank you very much Olivier Bourbeau is vice president Quebec and federal affairs at restaurants Canada still ahead is plastic the worst thing for the environment or one of the best innovations ever could it be that it's both stay with us